within Dublin, it's like you're on a crusade because Dublin haven't been winning all Ireland finals since the 30s. So it's nearly like this unbelievable task or this unbelievable dream that you're trying to achieve. People don't understand why you play. Why do you bother play? Like, why don't you just quit? They won't be able to understand, you know, the effort that's putting in, you know, the turmoil that's in your head when you lose a match. And it's this unbelievably unique idea that a group of 35 players do this for the love of it, not for financial gain. And that's why I love it, because that no one gets it. Nobody else understands. I grew up in Cabinteely. My father is a huge inspiration of mine. He was my hero and when we were growing up. My dad played from Dublin, Captain Dublin, in the 89 season. He was the, the knowledge database when I was growing up as to how to play the game. He would have coached me from the age of under six all the way through the academy and, and taught me everything I needed to know. The amount we were training, it was twice, three times a week for my whole childhood, so we spent a lot of time together. I'll die when my laugh so In 2009, I got called into the squad. It was just the year after I just finished my leave insert. I was running for a ball and I felt some pressure on my knee and I felt a snap. And it was excruciating pain for 10 or 15 seconds. And then it was nothing. Got a scan the next day and I got a call and it was the physio to say my cruciate had gone. They said the rehabilitation time was seven months. I think I was 20. Just at the start of your career, only having played basically a year and a half of senior hurling for Dublin, which was the dream ever since I was a kid. I was in shock. Like it's the start of a very lonely path. It was a breakthrough year for Dublin. The outlook for Dublin hurling at the time was brilliant. And I wanted to be a part of that. I wanted to help that team. I wanted to win something with Dublin senior team. And that being taken away from me from a good part, basically, for the next year was, was heartbreaking. I found it very hard to stay motivated. You know, I was injured. I was in college. My whole friends went away for the summer, first year out of college, and I was staying at home to be part of something else. Again, something that they didn't understand. And I couldn't handle it that well. The balance was gone. So it was challenging. And like I failed my exams in college that year. It was incredibly tough. You can tell the way a game is poised that it could come down to a last minute free. I'm being trusted as the most accurate on the team from place balls. And that's what you kind of have to train yourself to be used to. Why I go down on a Friday, it's more so to familiarise myself and nearly being able to picture myself on the pitch. So when it gets to the match on a Saturday or a Sunday, that if I put a ball down in a big stadium packed full of people, I can say to myself, well, I've been here only two days ago in this exact same position and I went through the post. And then believing in yourself that you're hitting these for a reason and you're the one that's at that moment in time the best person to put this over and take confidence from that. And then zone out everything else. It's the sense of identity that you have in my life that I've had since I was been five or six, and it's who I've always wanted to be, is to play hurling for my county. I've been so lucky to be with lads who encourage and push themselves on, and I draw inspiration from that as well. It's nice to know that you're involved with a group that are all kind of working together to the same common goal, and it's something that you'll be able to tell your children or your children's children when you're, uh, when you're old. Like.